youtube.com slash open up your mind 101. Today we have a guest today. His name is Mark Passio, and he's the creator of what on earth is happening.com. We'll go to him in a few minutes, and he's going to talk to us about secret societies, symbolism, and actually he's going to actually talk to us about the flip side of the Illuminati. A lot of people see the Illuminati as just one. A lot of people see one coin, one side of the Illuminati as basically being this evil group of people. But uh, along with someone else, um, when I was talking to Mark a few days ago, it was very interesting. He kind of like opened me up to this other side, and it's very, it's, it's, it's quite, I, 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 I was quite amazed. So he's going to cover that today. Let's stay on the topic. Um, the topic would be secret societies, of course, um, symbolism, and Illuminati. Um, now we're going to go to our host, Mark Passio. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. All right. Um, first of all, for the first of all, for the people that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself, Mark. Tell us about tell us about how you was awakened to to all of this as far as as far you know, as far as um, you know, the secret societies, the symbolism, the occultism, I mean all these venues. Basically, give give people a brief rundown of how you was exposed to all this and how you got interested in it. Sure. Well, uh, my background is um, basically in consciousness studies, um, esoteric information, um, occult uh, occult orders, uh, occult influence, and uh, I have some direct involvement with some uh, some occult orders. Um, I've always been an avid reader. I've always been a seeker of truth. I've always been one to study uh, the self and how one one self works. So um, that's the background to this, you know, studying metaphysics, studying consciousness, studying occultism. And I guess I've been doing this since my late teen years, uh, but uh, my consciousness wasn't always uh, what it is today. I looked at the world very, very differently back then. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I, uh, the, my way of looking at the world back then led to a lot of uh, suffering in my personal life, uh, and uh, it took uh, it took a lot of suffering to turn that around and really see how uh, I was uh, I had erred in the way I, lo- I was looking at the world previously, and uh, you know, kind of uh, making amends for that in the information that I'm putting forward nowadays. Awesome, awesome, Mark, and, it, and, it's, and this is great. Like, what was one of the things that actually sparked you, that actually like caught your interest to actually pursue this further? Uh, to be honest, I guess it's the level of uh, overt control that we see all around us in society. It's just the awareness of the, that we live in a male dominator culture, and uh, a lot of researchers put me onto that understanding. And uh, I, I guess the big four that I talk about as kind of uh, being ones who kind of really showed me um, how how all the pieces of the picture fit together, so to speak. Uh, A a gentleman by the name of Terrence McKenna, who's no longer with us, really um, uh, helped me to understand things about consciousness, uh, uh, self-exploration. He was an advocate of uh, shamanism, psychedelic shamanism in particular. Um, Another uh, researcher that I have a lot of respect for speaking his truth uh, was David Icke. Mm -hmm. Um, Icke uh, went through tremendous amounts of ridicule first beginning in presenting this information and just stuck with it, uh, researched it well, and stuck with speaking his truth no matter what anyone said, and that was a big inspiration to me. Uh, The the scholarly type research of uh, a gentleman uh, uh, like Michael Tessarian was also instrumental, and... um, uh, I've always uh, respected the directness and straightforwardness of Jordan Maxwell. Mm-hmm. So awesome, awesome, Mark. Now, a lot of people. You now, I'm familiar with all those people. Your name, they I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy, um, you know, all their work and what they what they've done for the movement. Sure. Um, now, specifically, a lot of people are aware. Uh, well, they're they're aware they're aware they're aware um, in, in in small bits, you know, as far mm-hmm. as you know, secret society. A lot of people heard of the Illuminati, you know. Sure. I mean, um, people have heard of it because you know a lot of uh, music, musicians have made it mentions in their music. You yes. Know, Tupac, uh, 
I mean, all across the board, whether it's hip-hop, rap, pop, you know, it's all, all across the board. Sure. And a lot of people have maybe an instance of who the Illuminati are and who secret societies are, and a lot of people kind of see a pattern that's going on, like, it's more it's more than just a government. People see that it's someone behind government. Right. And um and and that's what we call secret societies. Now Mark, break down what are these secret societies and and what and what types and who and who sure. are these people? Okay, well uh, specifically in reference to the Illuminati which you mentioned uh, it was originally a, uh, an occult order that was begun by Adam Weishaupt in uh, the 1700s um, in Bavaria, uh, also known as the Bavarian Illuminati. Uh, as an official occult order, uh, it lasted less than 20 years. However, there are researchers who think that its influence uh, is still extending into the very heart of governments throughout the world uh, as a uh, shadow government that controls things behind the scenes. Before you continue, Mark, yes. before you continue, uh, for all the listeners, if you go on what 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 on earth is happening dot com forward slash the bigger I mean forward slash bigger picture, um, there's basically Mark Mark will be covering several different subtopics, and there and there is, is a page of photos. So while he's talking, um, he he may he may be mentioning a point that's a photo. So feel free to check out that that page. I, I just and like that, to correct the URL that you gave. It's www.whatonearthishappening.com forward slash bigger picture. No the oh. in front of it. Bigger picture, all one word. Oh, my apologies, Mark. No yeah, problem. So feel, so feel free to go there and check out the pics as Mark is going through this. But Mark, continue. Okay. So um, that, that was the official Bavarian Illuminati. However, by Illuminati, what we basically mean is illuminated ones, those who have the light. So the, the, the thing that we have to understand is what does that mean uh, if we're going to understand what this occult order uh, presents itself as? What, what, how do they envision themselves? What does it mean that they say that they have the light? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'd like to really begin with a, with a quote about um, hu human consciousness. Mm -hmm. Th this is inscribed at the Temple of Delphi in Greece. Heed these words, you who wish to probe the depths of nature. If you do not find within yourself that which you seek, neither will you find it outside. If you ignore the wonders of your own house, how do you expect to find other wonders? In you is hidden the treasure of treasures. Know thyself, and you will know the universe and the gods. So, all knowledge of true import is self-knowledge. We need to understand our own consciousness. And when, when the Illuminati, the dark Illuminati, claim to have the light, they're saying that they know how consciousness works. They're saying they know how to use consciousness and will, how to manipulate it to their ends, to, to, to bend it in accordance with their will. So we, we have to first understand what consciousness is. It's the coming together of our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. These are the three ways that our consciousness really presents itself into the world. We, we make it manifest through those three expressions. How we think, what we feel, and how we act in the world. So uh, those three have to come together and act as one. We have to become beings that think, feel, and act as one. Mm -hmm. So we can't be torn apart. As we think is how we feel, and then that's what we do in the world. Mm -hmm. See, most people are in a state of what's called internal opposition with themselves. They may think a certain way, they may feel strongly about a certain thing, but then they will not act according to their convictions, according mm -hmm. to their thoughts and emotions. They'll go and do something else because it's more comfortable to right. do that thing. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the illuminated ones of the world today are, again, it's a dual side. There's a dark side, and that is what has been termed the Illuminati in general. And they feel that they have the light, they have the knowledge, and the rest of the world is beneath them in ignorance. It's a dual way of seeing people in the world, that they have understanding and they'll use that knowledge and understanding 
to, to do whatever they need to do to control people and to wield influence and power over them if it supports their selfish, egoic desires. Mm. So uh, how they wield this influence is through their understanding of consciousness, and particularly the understanding of how the human brain physiology works, and they, they employ occult methods to do this. So I don't know if you would like me, uh, be, before we get into other secret societies like Freemasonry and explain what that is about, uh, and we could talk about Rosicrucianism, we could talk about the Knights Templar, the Order of the Knights of Malta, whatever you'd like to go into, but would you like to go, go into a breakdown of how consciousness works through the physiology of the brain and what occultism really is, what the occult knowledge really is? Um, I, yeah, Mark, yeah. As far as that topic, I think my I think my listeners are familiar with that. I okay. My I I had said my previous on. Sure. So yeah, you could just go strictly. You could just go straight into the, um, the secret societies and the Freemasonry. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So we talked about the Bavarian Illuminati. There, the, the 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 seal of the mystery traditions, which is where all this knowledge, this hidden knowledge, that's what the occult is, right. comes from, um, is the mystery traditions. Um, the mystery traditions date back to pre, pre-Egyptian uh, civilization, and it's the knowledge, again, how consciousness works. Uh, the seal of the uh, illuminated ones is on the back of the reverse side of the uh, great seal of the United States, depicted on the left side of the back of the $1 bill. Mm-hmm. We could talk about what that symbol really means later. But uh, we, we could discuss uh, uh, another secret society uh, uh, or described as a society with secrets, Freemasonry. So um, Freemasonry uh, has its official beginnings in the late 16th century, uh, but it also predates that time period and goes back into ancient uh, 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 building guilds um, that go back to Egypt as well. Um, it is a, a system of morality. Right. It's, try, it's trying to really teach what mo- moral lessons, you know, what, what morality is, and how we get in touch with the moral, uh, the, the proper way to act in the world. Uh, this system of morality is, is veiled. It's not taught directly. It's taught through allegory, uh, which is basically like parables, like telling stories that, that are told uh, and, and seemingly are fiction but they actually reveal things about the real world and, and uh, life on earth. They, they reveal things about what is actually taking place here. Right. And they're also, this, this system of teaching is also uh, illustrated with many different types of symbols. Symbolism, the, the symbols of building is prevalent in it uh, because the temple that is being worked upon is the temple in man. The builders, the masons... Okay, but masons are builders, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. They build in certain types of material. So uh, they're, they're working with the, the uh, knowledge, this hidden knowledge, and they're working to improve, and some of them to tear down, the, uh, the inward part of the, of the being, the, the, the part that makes us who we are. And this largely happens through the, the brain, the human brain. This is the three degrees of Freemasonry are actually the first three degrees of what's called the Blue Lodge. Um, right. uh, the earliest, the first uh, degree being the Entered Apprentice, the second degree being the Fellow Craft, and the third degree being the Master Mason are actually symbolic allegories of the structures that are within the human brain. The lowest part of the brain, or the floor of the house in Freemasonry, being the R complex, the reptile brain. You know where survival instincts come from, fight or flight mode of consciousness. That, then uh, you have um, the second degree representing uh, being getting in touch with the limbic brain, the part of the brain that uh, con- uh, that um, make, gives rise to our emotions, our emotional makeup. So um, um, that that is the second degree of of masonry. It's an allegory for uh, intuition and uh, getting in touch with the truth that is within ourselves. Right. Um, the third degree, then, is the development of the higher order thought function and spreading higher order conceptual ideas, and that's the Master Mason. And um, that is mark. represented by the compasses on the compasses and, and square of Freemasonry. We see three parts of that symbol as well. You have the square representing base consciousness, right. the reptile brain, 
the G representing the, the uh, and, and the, the square would also represent in that image um, the uh, entered apprentice degree, first degree, floor of the house. You need to be led into higher levels of awareness and knowledge. You need a little bit of coaxing. The G in the middle, the grand architect of the universe, uh, it's, it's the, the goddess, basically. It's the, the emotional makeup of the individual. It's the proper moral uh, sensibility. Um, it's, uh, that, it's care, basically, that which gives rise to everything we see around us. What we see manifested is what people care enough to manifest. They, they put their actions into practice based on how they feel. The emotions are, the, are the, mi the middle of it all. That's why it's called the middle chamber in Freemasonry, the limbic brain. And then you have the compasses that represent compassion. It's a part of the word, compass, compassion. You know, that's the, 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 the directional marker, moral guidance in the world. You know, how do we, how do we know what it, which is the right direction to go in? You need to develop the, the two hemispheres of the brain in balance, represented by the compasses. The left and right brain hemisphere come into balance, and higher order thought uh, is made possible, conceptual thinking. And then the prefrontal cortex, uh, which mystics kind of referred to as the, the, the gateway to opening the third eye, comes online, and we can awaken the stone the builders rejected, or the pineal gland in the center of the head, the third eye, the, the eye that sees everything, another symbol of Freemasonry, the all-seeing eye. And right. you can see this is a very powerful uh, moral allegorical concept. However, some Masons are dark Masons, and right. they want to control, they want to use this information to, to control other people's actions and wield their own influence, and they're building with stone. They're the, the stone builders they're 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 blo they're putting blocks in place mm -hmm. the true mason the true freemason builds with light you know he is a worker in the light and he's trying to bring the light down to the earth, the light of creation down to the earth and he's trying to spread the light of creation uh throughout the people of the earth now before you go deeper sure. mark um kind of kind of kind of um i guess briefly for the listeners kind of sure. explain the scottish reich and the york reich how sure. they how they similar, but how they differ in a way. Sure. So uh, the York Rite is comprised of ten degrees, ending with the Knights Templar degree, and um, it, it usually is um, taken on by fewer individuals. Most people know more about the the Scottish Rite, the thirty two degree system, uh, ending in um, the Archmason or the the Sublime Prince of Prince of the Royal Secret. But there is a symbolic 33rd degree that is given to open some initiates into what is known as Illuminized Masonry, the beginning of which is the 33rd degree. Mm -hmm. In my studies, um, the highest degree uh, is the 45th degree, because um, when you reach the 33rd degree, okay. th you are illuminated. It's right. the, the first degree of illuminated Freemasonry. So that is... 32, uh, 33, I'm sorry. Okay. And if you, do, if you represent that as the sun, okay, uh -huh. it's because you're under the sun finally. Okay? You finally reached the east, the rising sun. You know, the, in masonry, one of the, in, in the parlance of masons, uh, it is said that you should always travel east because you're always going in the direction of enlightenment, okay? a, a, a uh, symbolic allegory uh, in language. So, when, you, when you've reached the sun, that's the first degree of the illuminated uh, uh, degrees of masonry. Upon those degrees, one must still travel through the 12 houses of the zodiac. And again, the, zo the sun, like the sun travels, the sun makes its journey through the course of the year through the 12 constellations in the zodiacal band, and that's called the zodiac. So we are a living zodiac. The zodiac isn't just something out there in the sky. It's, it's the qualities of the individual. It's something that is actually within us. So uh, if you look at the seal uh, on the back of the $1 bill, the reverse side with the pyramid and all-seeing eye, you'll see that the bottom uh, level is different. The bottom course of brick has a date inscribed upon it, and uh, there, uh, n none of these things are accidental. Every symbol there is put there for a very specific reason. And you, we could go into a breakdown of that if you'd like. But that, that represents the sun, the first level 
under the light of illuminized masonry. There are 12 courses upon that, built upon that, which represents the journey of the individual through the, his own personal zodiac, the qualities of the individual that need to be fostered after reaching that degree. So if you add 33 plus 12, you get 45, a highly symbolic number, because if you look at the compasses and square symbol of Freemasonry, you'll notice that the square, which represents base consciousness, which one uh, uh, you know, presumably wants to get out of, to understand more about the world, to have more consciousness, more awareness uh, of what is taking place, to get off of the square and to the compasses, to the apex of those compasses, which is the point of balance and the point of enlightenment, you, the most direct route is a straight line connecting those two points, the bottom of the, of the square and the top of the compasses. And that makes a 45-degree angle with the square, which is a 90-degree angle, not found in nature. You know, rough edges, um, uh, hard, unyielding, right? Okay. doesn't want to change. A block, it forms a block, Okay, now, this Mark, is symbolic to, language, right? Now, just to make sure I understand you right, so you're saying, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You're saying sure. there's actually 45 degrees, but the 12 degrees after the 33rd, you're saying they're hidden. Yes, they're, they're if they're even revealed to even initiates of the 33rd degree, mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel that they are symbolic degrees. They oh. are personal degrees okay. because. Again, the object is to go from the square to the compasses or from base consciousness to true compassion, the understanding that there is only one consciousness here. And as one individual being suffers, all suffer. And to do that, you have to recognize divinity in everyone and recognize that um, the sovereignty of all beings as well, which is what the dark masons, dark illuminists do not do. They want to maintain male patriarchal dominance of this world. Now, Mark, um, the pyramids, uh, I, I would like you to get into that because um, um, a lot of times, um, as far as, like, example, um, Charles Taze Russell, um, this, this, um, basically he was, he was, the uh, the evangelist, the so-called evangelist, who started the who started the Jehovah Witness movement, and he started the, also the Bible Students movement. It was Bible Students, and it became Jehovah Witness when he died, when these when these two groups separated. Okay. But he had a he had an extreme fascination with pyramids. Sure. And basically, he he actually, so, I mean, he said he he made his calculations, he made his prediction that that you know the uh, the Messiah, the Christ, you know, will come. On the on um on 19, in the year 1914, even mm -hmm. though it didn't happen. Sure. So so um and, and, and a lot of, and, and there's um man I kind of lost train of thought. But getting to the pyramids and as far as how it relates when it comes to Knights nice Templar and how it relates to the Freemasonry, like 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 what's like 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 get into that. As sure. Far as the pyramids. Well, a pyramid. Um We've heard of pyramid schemes. We've heard of pyramid power. Okay, A pyramid is a tapered structure that leads to an apex with a whole lot at the bottom holding it up, a whole, a whole large base of, of mass at the bottom holding it up. And then gradually as you go up the level, levels of the pyramid or the slope of the pyramid, you have less and less okay, leading to an apex at which it is all connected. So... Just um, uh, if you look at the image on the website or you envision a pyramid, the, the, the base is what holds it up. Okay, right. so, what is hold, so symbolically, if there are dark rulers at the top of the world, symbolically, okay, controlling things, the thing that is giving them their power or structure for them to be up that high are the people in base consciousness at the bottom of the pyramid that, that act without thinking or feeling and don't see the bigger picture. So they're the stone that comprises the pyramid of ignorance that allows the illuminates, the dark illuminates at the top of the pyramid to exercise their control for, as a top-down power scheme. They see the whole big picture because they're at the apex. This is why they say they have the light. 
it's a it's a false light because it's the dark side of the of the light, the dark side of the sun. Okay, they may have knowledge about how consciousness works, but how they've chosen to use it is an ex- in an extremely dark way for manipulation, for organizing hierarchical structures, for organizing um, basically. Again, top-down, filtering down methods of controlling individuals who don't know what they're aware of at lower levels. They feed into larger schemes above them, larger control uh, uh, organization of control above them, and they just do their work. They just go along to get along and do what is asked of them without questioning the motives, the agenda that exists at the consciousness of those at higher levels of such a pyramid scheme. So uh, that's how the, the, st- the structure of male dominance in the world is actually organized. People in different areas of the life, banking systems. You know, an example is a bank teller certainly doesn't know what the agenda is of the owners of the bank. He just is there showing up and doing his job. Exactly. Military, you know, the, the people who actually develop the plans for military deployments – they're they're not telling the private uh, exactly what the purpose of the mission is. They're just told to follow their orders and do what they're asked to do without thinking about that because it's a hierarchy. Politics works the same way. The education system works the same way. The media is completely controlled by this. All different uh, uh, aspects of our daily lives that we don't th- – as a matter of fact, if you really think about it, every corporation works like this. The whole corporate world works as a pyramid scheme. The CEO of the corporation isn't telling every uh, la- lower level employee what his agenda is. You know, he's directing the agenda, but not everybody knows what it is. They just show up and do their jobs. So it's the same thing. Higher levels of knowledge, a person can see how it all fits together. But at lower levels of knowledge, and uh, who, people who don't see the interconnectivity of how the whole the whole scheme works. They're just do, doing the part of that job, a part of that job, a part of that agenda, without even realizing what they're a part of. You've heard the phrase, "The road to hell is paved with good intentions." These yep. people at the bottom levels aren't necessarily evil. They they would have no awareness of the agenda at higher levels, but because they don't really think for themselves, they haven't really opened their minds to higher levels of awareness and being able to see patterns. That's what consciousness really is. The ability to see how things fit together, patterns, pulling back and seeing the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, um, uh, okay, Mark. Now, get into you know the Freemasonry as far as these secret handshakes, and because uh, because a lot of people don't realize because when I first woke up to Freemasonry, it was amazing because when I heard about the secret handshake, I said, oh no, it's just. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of threw it out the window as some kind of joke or some kind of sure. crazy theory. But once I actually start looking deeply at different photos and actually looking at, you know, like even live TV and even sure. like these crazy handshakes, I was like, wow, like, what, what's going on? Like, so, so, Mark, get get into these secret handshakes. Yeah, you, you definitely them. see them used in different uh, by different political figures. Um, it, there really isn't as much to it as you might think. They're just identifying grips so that one may identify another mason. Um, it, it's, it's by placement of uh, knuckles in certain positions on the hand when, when gripping the hand. Um, there's also, you know, to identify whether you're an, an, uh, an entered apprentice, a fellow crafter, or a master mason. There's, uh, there's signs like the, 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 the bear's paw. There's signs of, of distress that it, you yeah, need I guess that's, that's the one they put in the chest, right? Right, right. And inside and inside the, the lapel, right. Uh, okay, oh, okay. In, 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 inside the uh, the fold of a, of a coat or a, ja- a jacket, something okay. like that. Um, there, so, there's, so all, there's, all it is is basically... There's like phrases, identity. there's code phrases. There's okay. also something called the five points of fellowship. Okay. Uh, a, a grip um, that where um, ma- masons will place their foot together, touch the knee... Um, uh, uh, touch the, um, the the hand with the back, uh, 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 basically place the, the the right shoulders together, and then uh, also uh, place their um, 
each one's mouth in close proximity to the other person's ear so that a whisper can be exchanged. These five points are called the five points of fellowship. Basically, it's a symbolic a- allegory for earth, air, water, fire, and spirit. Okay. So uh, the five points of a pentacle, the five forces of nature, etc. And uh, it's an identifying marker for masons in distress that may want to, you know, have need assistance, uh, you know, help each other out in certain uh, situations where they may require the assistance of a fellow mason. Okay. Now, Mark, um, um, let's get into this Knights nice Templar. Start, start, start um, talking about that. Like, okay. um, get, in, get into how it was created, get into the functions and the order, Knights nice Templar. So, um, basically, uh, again, it, it is a degree of the York Rite, but that isn't what we're talking about here. We're talking about the actual uh, order of the Knight, Knights Templar. That was a, a, okay. uh, a military order in Christianity, and uh, it was um, uh, basically uh, uh, early um, 1100s, okay? okay? And it was formed uh, to guide Christians through the Holy Land uh, while the Crusades were being waged, okay? So right. um, n- not, it, it was these uh, military knights or combatants during the okay. Crusades were there to escort non-combatants through the Holy Land, you know, so they would not be attacked uh, by Muslims, etc. Um, basically, that, that's the official function of the Templars. Okay. Um, they, they basically became very rich because of their, uh, you know, being, being paid to do this by the church. They also uh, developed, um, because it was so difficult to carry lots of goods and money, Money was in coins. It would have been heavy. They de- they began to develop a, um, a system of credit, basically, where um, it was the money instead of money is being exchanged. They were exchanging uh, paper notes, saying uh, as promissory notes that this was worth this much gold. So they basically became the first bankers, the first international bankers as we know of it. Um, they really started wielding so much influence through. Uh, you know, usury, basically. It was uh, devaluation of money. It was um, lending more money than they actually had through promissory notes. You know, you don't need as much gold on record because few people would withdraw this. This is how basic modern-day banking began. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, some uh, uh, high-level high-level politicians slash kings at the time, uh, religious leaders, got really uh, angry at the fact that they were starting to wield a lot more influence than even them because they were controlling mon- monetary supplies and, uh, and lending. So uh, the, the Templars came under a purge in 1307 by a king that they had obviously uh, lent money to who I guess uh, couldn't fully repay them. That okay. They were wielding a lot of influence uh, in his region, and it was uh, King Philip IV of France uh, basically got together with the Pope of the time and uh, decided to wage a uh, counter-strike against the Templars, and he, he successfully was able to kill a large amount of them in 1307 by uh, handing out secret orders in the region uh, throughout uh, southern Europe. The claim is that some of them fled into the northern regions of Europe and uh, England and Scotland and right. survived and, uh, as a, as a, uh, uh, a non-official order, um, you know, an underground order, secret society. Right. Um, I know you, you already kind of familiarized the audience with the, uh, I guess, the dark Illuminati by, you know, sure. by certain things you said in Freemasonry. Sure. But continuing into the dark Illuminati, and then, and, and, like, break that down. Like, like, basically, give the um, listeners an overview of that, and then flip, and then flip it over, and then tell them about the good side of it. Because that was interesting. When I was, when I was talking to you the other day about it. Sure. I think listeners need to hear that. Same. Well, I, I want to say that in order to understand that, the first thing you have to really understand is that occultism is simply hidden knowledge about the self and the consciousness and how it works, and it's like a tool. A hammer is neither good nor evil. If you laid a hammer down on the table and asked asked someone, is this hammer good or is this hammer evil? Mm -hmm. The question doesn't really make sense because it's simply a tool. The consciousness of the wielder 
of the hammer determines how the hammer will be used. Will it be used to perhaps build a shelter for the homeless, or will it be used to uh, murder someone? So yeah. that's what's giving it its intent, Okay, mm -hmm. the wielder. So knowledge is just knowledge, and that's uh, occult means hidden. That's what it means. It means hidden from sight. So uh, if you're occulting knowledge, you're claiming ownership of it, and you're claiming that you have the right to hide it from someone else. This is nonsense. Knowledge is there to be freely shared by the people of the world so that they can come up in consciousness and awareness and use it to make the world a better place. So there's two schools of occultism. You know, there's magic and sorcery. Okay. And they both have similar definitions. Mm -hmm. They're both the art and science of influencing change to, uh, uh, to occur in accordance with the will. However... They are complete opposite definitions according to how you're using the word will. Mm -hmm. So magic uses this influence to help people see things that they may not formerly have seen so that they can come up in awareness. And that's doing the true will. The will of creation is the evolution of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's what magic or positive uh, occultism is. You may have knowledge. People may be in such ego or in such left brain imbalance, they don't want to receive it. So you, you, you live a certain way, you speak a certain way, you act a certain way, that you're, you become an influence. They may not even see what that influence is, but eventually they become aware of it, you know, according to their own time. Um, sorcery is the exact opposite of this. It's, it's holding knowledge over someone else as a weapon. And you are using an influence to simply get what you want out of other people. So mm. it's selfish will. You're, okay. you're, you're saying my will be done, not thy will of the universe be done, of God, whatever you want to call that force, that, that force of creation. Okay? Uh, th and you're going against, by, by acting in that sense, the will of creation. And you're, you're also actually getting everybody else to go against that will, which is why there's so much suffering in the world. Because we're not really acting how the divine intelligence in the universe really wishes for us to act. It wants us to come up in consciousness. It wants us not to suffer. It wants us to become more aware. But we constantly buck that by just caring about ourselves, not, not caring about the injustices that are going on in the world, not looking at the bigger picture, not looking at the patterns, uh, and, and, and doing something about the evil that's really all around us. So the, these darker orders, I, w I want to read a quote about how they really work, okay? okay. And how, why this pyramid scheme is detrimental, why all hierarchical schemes and, and orders that employ this scheme are really detrimental. And that's why I'd like to say, I belong to no secret society or, 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 or earthly lodge or earthly um, occult order any longer. Uh, at one point in the past, I did uh, belong to some organizations that dealt with the satanic ideology. Mm -hmm. I, I was a member of the Church of Satan in, in the past, which I, I have said led me down a path of you know, uh, seeing the world that led to nothing but suffering. Right. I, w I was affiliated, I had affiliations with the, te the Church of Lucifer, I had affiliations with the Temple of Set, I was a member of the Order of the Evil Eye, and some organizations that spread similar ideologies. Right. Um, uh, n did not really get too, too interconnected with the deeper uh, levels of it as far as people that were, were involved. Uh, the highest appointment that I reached was a, pre a priesthood in the Church of Satan. Right. But uh, again, uh, the satanic ideology is one that worships the ego. Uh, right. It sees oneself as God, and right. it sees oneself as I can hold knowledge and wield it for selfish influence, and you know, consequences for that be damned. You know, that's I'll buck the will of creation. It, right. th that's why I say, right, uh, that's why I say do as you will, because it's, it's like having like a will of God, right? Well, it, see, do that, that could mean two different things. I mean, Whose okay. will? See, it, when Crowley said, uh, 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 do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, I don't believe he meant it to mean do whatever you want, and okay. and, and and it doesn't matter what what you do. He meant, do the will of creation. That is the whole of the law. That's, that's natural law, in effect. And if we recognize it and do that will, we, we will prosper and we won't suffer like we're suffering now as a species. If you 
take it the other way, the dark way, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, that means man, I am God, and th there is no truth. It leads down the slippery slope of moral relativism, and it says you can do whatever you want because there's no God, therefore there's no truth, therefore I'm God on earth, and I can, I can create whatever kind of suffering I want to create here, and I don't have to experience the consequences of that. And that's what these dark occultists at the highest levels controlling the, all the control in the world, behind all the control, the male dominance of the world, that's how they think. This is their ideology, that they own the earth, they are our owners, and that they are gods here. You know, that's, that's what the dark occultic way of viewing the world is. And the reason they want to set up everything as a pyramid structure is, I'd like to illustrate that with a quote. This is a researcher by the name of Phil Rockstro. He stated that the, authori the authoritarianism inherent to a pyramidal structure is antithetical to the concept of the rights and liberties of an individual. Most individuals that are bound by secrecy-prone hierarchical values will over time lose the ability to display free thinking, engage in civic discourse, and even be able to envisage the notion of true freedom. And indeed, isn't that what we really have? Most people can be described like that in the world. They really don't understand what true freedom is. They, do, they can't engage in really a higher conceptual way of thinking and civic discourse. And they're completely concerned mostly about themselves and, if, and their level of comfort. Not about what's right or moral or just in the world, but about whether my situation is okay, is comfortable enough for me. And that's why this will continue for as long as people uh, ha have a consciousness at that level, the manipulation of the world and the suffering of its people will continue and that is exactly as it should be I am perfectly at peace with that that is exactly as it should be I may speaking to to attempt to be ch to change that putting words out and conceptual ideas to try to change that but that is exactly as it should be because that is the level of consciousness that we're at collectively and that's what we're creating so to say that just these people are doing it up at the top is kind of a, uh, you know, uh, not an accurate picture of the whole thing. The people at the bottom are what hold that structure up, and that's who all the weight is upon, you know? The people at the top, there's no weight upon them, you know, if you envision it like a pyramid. The weight is on those. They're holding up the structure. They're the people who are holding up the whole load, carrying the pyramid on their back, you know? They need to step out of that position and simply allow it to crumble. But fear is what holds it in place. Exactly. They're so afraid about what they will lose instead of imagining what they could then create. Because that's what this is all about. Our potential to be conscious co-creators of our reality. And that's what the dark occultists don't want us to see. That we're incredibly powerful beings. So that quote really illustrates how they work, and again, they have to work through control of the mind, right. because that's what links the spirit and the body. Mm -hmm. You know, the body is spirit having a physical experience here. It's the vehicle for it, it's the vehicle for spirit to have an experience in the three-dimensional reality that we live in. Mm -hmm. But the thing that exists between those is the mind. You know, the right. mind is what perceives the three-dimensional experience and right. forms conceptual ideas about it. So, you, you know, you're not going to control the spirit because it's not in physical incarnation, okay? It, it's simply what is. You're not going to control that. If you tried to control the body of everybody on the earth, you'd run into big problems because, one, there's a lot of, it would be a lot of logistical requirements to do that, and, two, everybody would know that they're under total control. It would be right. so visible that no one would be able to deny it. But if you control the mind of people and their perceptions through the type of media you pump out into the world, through the type of food, which we are what we eat, and it affects the brain, you know, if uh, you control it through the type of education that people receive and what they get to see, hear, and read, then you have them right where you want them because you're controlling the mind. And when we look at the word government we see that it, is, it breaks down into two Latin words. Gubernare is a Latin verb 
See, when we have a gu- gubernatorial election, we're electing a governor, right? right. So right. The, the word gubernare is to control in Latin. Oh, okay. And then the second part of the word government is ment. It comes from the Latin mente, which we get the word mental from, which means mind. So oh. gubernare mente, government, mind control. That's what Excellent. it is. It's what it always has been. It's what it always will be. Because we're not, we're not doing our own government. We're not controlling our own mind. We're not bringing our mind to a place of balance and oneness within yeah. by, by balancing the left and right brain hemispheres. And this is done through what we pay attention to, the media we take in, the kind of books we read or don't read, uh, the, you know, the kind of uh, uh, discussions that we have with other people, the kind of food we eat, you know. Right etc., etc. And um, you, there will always be government, but there doesn't have to be externally imposed male dominator government. We right. can control our own mind right. and come up to higher levels of awareness, and that's internal government, and that's the state of true anarchy or non-coercionism, meaning that no one rules another because everyone recognizes the sovereignty and divinity in every other being. And it's the, the golden rule, you know, to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. You know, right. you, you only really act like that if you recognize everyone else, every other being's divinity and sovereignty. So um, uh, that, the, the, the dark occultists don't see reality like that. They right. see it as a prison. They see it as it is better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Right. They're, they're bucking the divine will going against it, and they, and they want to be gods here, yeah. depicted by the seal on the back of the $1 bill. You know, right. they want to build in stone. Right. Just so, to interrupt, Mark. Yes. Um, 347-843-4772. You can call in and ask Mark any questions or comments what we're talking about. We're talking about secret societies, Illuminati, uh, the dark side, the light side, symbolism. We're talking all about that. 347 347- Eight four three four seven seven two. Do you want to take some calls now, or do you want to continue with some symbolism? We can continue. Okay. If you look at the symbol of the um, uh, all-seeing eye and pyramid, which everyone is, for the most part, familiar with how it looks, if you look at the symbol on the back of the one dollar bill, um, w- w- you see a pyramid with the the capstone not yet in place, in in brick. Mm -hmm. An all-seeing eye is in the sky, illuminated. The the light is coming from that region of the sky. It's a two-dimensional hole in the sky, Mm -hmm. okay? And the light is actually in another dimension of being. And the light is pouring out of that dimension into our three-dimensional reality. The words Anu Aqueptus are inscribed above the pyramid, Novus Ordo Seclorum, on a, on a seal below. Mm-hmm. And then there, the pyramid, again, we've talked about it briefly, has 13 courses of brick, the bottom of which is a Roman numeral date. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you'd like, I'd like to break this down and explain to people the true esoteric meaning behind this symbol. Because many yes, researchers, I believe, have touched upon it, but I haven't seen anybody to hit it completely, you know, hit the nail completely on the head. Yes, please bring okay. it down, Mark. So, Anuit Coeptus means in Latin, he favors our project. He favors our building, our enterprise. He, she, or it. Okay, so it's, it's first person singular, okay, Anuit, to favor. Uh-huh. Uh, Coeptus is a project, a building, an undertaking. Okay? So, he favors our project. Novus Ordo Seclorum means the new world order. It does not mean new order of the ages. Anyone that cl- makes that claim does not know how to c- translate Latin, period. Uh, seclorum is a truncated Latin form of the, v- of the noun seculus, which means world or universe. Right. It is not cyclorum, from w- which we get the English word cycles or mm-hmm. ages. Okay? It's a completely different word, and a lot of misdeception, a lot of misdirection and misinformation goes on regarding that word. It does not mean ages. Okay? It is world or universe. So the new world order is what that says at the bottom. And uh, then we have a pyramid with a date at the bottom leading up to the all-seeing eye. So, he favors our work, the new world order. 
Well, what is, who is he, she, it, right? What is the nature of the work, and what is the new world order? Right. These questions immediately come to mind. Well, the favor of the work is obviously the eye in that pyramid, okay? And the work is obviously the building project that's being right. done, which we see before us in the, in the image. Mm-hmm. But what is that? Okay, and we're going to see that it's a, a two-sided coin. This image is a dual symbol, a dual sigil, okay? It's many symbols comprised to make a sigil, but then there, it is, has a dual meaning, and as all good symbols do, okay? We talked about Masons being uh, people who want to wield influence for one will or the other. Uh, indeed, right. all occultists or magicians do this. Okay, it's the, the question is: Is are you a, a true magician or are you a sorcerer? Are you doing the will of creation or are you do, trying to do your own selfish, egoic will? Right. So, let's look at the dark side of this symbol first. Okay, okay. who favors the project? Well, it's the eye. Right? right? And that is the eye of the light bringer, Lucifer. Right. Also known as Aten in Egyptian mystery tradition. Right. Okay? The bringer of light, the sun, the one who has the light, right? However, this doesn't mean see, Lucifer means light bringer. Right. Lux fere in Latin. Lux means light and ferro fere is to bring or to carry to ferry something, right? So to carry the light, right? Well, the dark occultists that pitch envision themselves at the apex of this pyramid scheme that they rule over, mm-hmm. consider that they have the light. Again, we talked about that. So this is who they depict themselves as. Right. I am God. I carry the light. Okay? I possess the light. It's mine to wield that my knowledge of how consciousness works of how the mind can be controlled, right? of how um, I can manipulate other people to do my egoic will. Mm-hmm. And look at what it is. It's a triangle, right? So they're, they view themselves as the all-yang, right? an upward-pointing triangle. It's called in ancient symbology the blade. It's a, fa- a rudimentary phallic symbol, right? They're saying, I am the male dominator of the entire structure, and I have the light. And the rest of the structure is in darkness. They're bricks, right? They're in one form, uniforms, right? The one form. Uh, A brick used to be clay, right? It used to be malleable and be able to take many different forms. But then it was baked by too much yang or solar energy, the left brain hemisphere. When we're in the left brain hemisphere all the time, the limbic system doesn't function properly, and we start to live in the R complex of the brain, in consciousness, lower consciousness, base consciousness, the square, the floor of the house, the blocks. That's where the blocks, the bricks are placed. Okay? So this is a, a symbolic allegory. The blocks, meaning the blocks to higher levels of consciousness. Uniforms, right? One form, baked by the left brain, solar yang energy, with no balance of the yin or sacred feminine side. So look at what they're building. They're building the blade. They're building a structure that is the reflection of them. That's what a god does, right? A god creates a world and the beings in it in his own image and likeness. And they view themselves as god. The the, uh, darkly illuminated ones. Okay? So they're building a world in their image and likeness that they rule over, right? right? What will happen if their new world order project of building with the stone the people of the world who can't change, is completed. Look at the scene, if you're looking at this image, and tell me what happens when the capstone of stone goes into place. Mm -hmm. What happens in the scene? 
You want oh, to? Is that, is that a question mark? Or yeah, yeah. I'm a, asking you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, oh man, you, you call me off guard, Mark. I thought, I thought that was a rhetorical question. I'm sorry, say the question again. <laughs> I'm turning the tables on you. <laughs> oh, okay. Say the question again. I'm sorry. Okay, if you build the stone, the the, okay. the pyramid of of this this symbol upward, and you complete it in stone, what happens in the scene? It's, it's completed. The project's completed. That's correct. Yeah. But but what is the effect of that happening in the scene? See, look at where the eye is. It's mm-hmm. up the in top. the sky, right? And the light is pouring down into the world from there. Well, okay. if you complete the, the pyramid in brick, what happens? The uh, light goes out from the world. Yeah, okay. You see? All right. The, the light gets blocked from the world. The source of light, the you know actual creator, right? Uh-huh. If they place this, if the ones who view themselves as God here place this capstone symbolically on the pyramid, it means that the male dominator world is complete. It's right. a prison for the souls here who could not change, right? right? And th- then they're all in darkness. The, the the light goes out from the world forever. And yeah. the new world order is complete. And that's what the dark builders or dark masons are building toward. Because another thing I want to clear up is we see a dichotomy between masons and non-masons. But the fact mm-hmm. is that everyone is a mason. Everyone in the world is a mason, is a builder of that which we experience here. We are all co-creators, whether we're doing it consciously or unconsciously. So there is no such thing as a non-Mason. Everyone is a builder. The question is, is are we building with brick or are we building with light? So now to reverse the side of the well, and just to uh, finish with the symbolism, the the, um, uh, Roman numerals at the bottom of the pyramid are um, a date, 1776 which was the birth date of the Bavarian Illuminati secret society in Germany at uh, 1776. They initiated their order on May 1st of 1776, which is called Walpurgisnacht, which is the highest uh, Luciferian slash satanic Sabbath of the year, St. Walpurgis's night. And uh, it is a... um, it is a time when a sacrifice is often given to the earth to ensure a bountiful harvest because it, it occurs in the middle of the spring season when, when you know, crops are being sown and then uh, you know, a sacrifice was usually given to the, to the earth you know, in, uh, in pagan sun worship traditions to uh, uh, please the sun god to uh, you know, uh, ensure a bountiful harvest in the summer. So that's the dark date of the darkly illuminated ones. Okay, okay. we're going to see the flip side of this now. Okay, All right. now, and again, they're building a solar male dominator world. Right, the the sun and the twelve houses of the zodiac in brick. Right, and ending with the capstone in stone, which blocks the light out of the world, completing a male dominator world ruled by male dominators. Okay, the they have the light. They are male dominators, or have you know the uh, uh, they depict the, themselves the I again ego right as God. It's another symbol. The I at the top is is me. It's God. I'm God in these dark occultist ideology. Okay, so the mm-hmm. ego is what is is ruling over it all. Right now, the the light side of it, he favors our project. The New World Order, right? right. Well, a, a light mason doesn't build with brick. W- what else does a mason do besides build with brick? He often removes brick. Right. Because you call a mason to your home to work on a wall or something, he's either going to build it up or he may need to tear it down if it's in disarray. Right. Symbolically meaning to change it, okay, to take the blocks out from what you're really trying to achieve or or evolve to, right? All symbolic words and meanings, all in the symbolism, all right? So a light mason wants to bring the light of the creator down to the earth. 
And the way he does that is by helping the blocks or the people who, who are resistant to this change to change into light, into a form that, that it re- reflects the creator. So it's a transmutation of these bricks in this pyramid, and they become more like light. Okay, right. And when that happens, this all-seeing eye comes down and joins up with the earth because there's nothing to block it. See, the, blo- the bricks have been removed or transmuted, whichever way you want to look at it, and now it's all light. And this threefold triangle no longer represents a male dominator or the phallic blade, but it represents the three aspects of consciousness unified as one. Right. As we think, so we feel, so we act in the world. And there is no contradiction between those three. We're no longer inhabited by opposition. Which, if you look into the Hebrew, the opposer or the adversary is the force of Satan, which we get the word Satan from. Oh, okay? okay. So now let me let me let me say this: this is the positive incarnation of Lucifer, the bringer of light, actually bringing knowledge and awareness to others. So again, Lucifer is a, is a dual uh, symbolic god. Okay, it isn't just one thing; it's the dark energy, the dark light. Right, because at the Aten was a dual, full, uh, a dual um, uh, symbolic god. Aten in Egypt, right? He had different incarnations depending on his placement in the sky. Right, in in the, in the horizon at uh, at the beginning of the day, the Aten was called Horus, the rising sun, because he's bringing the light to the world at the beginning of the day, the dawn of a new day. Okay, at his zenith position at noon, he was known as Amun Ra. Okay, right. w- which is why prayers are evoked to the sun god Amun Ra. Amen, sp- spoken at the end of Christian prayers. They're sending the intention directly upward toward the sun at his zenith, his highest point of power, where he reigns over the world and 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 gives the m- the most light to the world. Okay, and then at the setting position. Aten was known as Set, the dark brother of Horus, who conquers him and kills him and puts him into the underworld at the end of every day when the sun is setting, going downward, and the light is leaving the world. Okay, So Lucifer is both Horus and Set, because it's the sun, the bringer of light. Okay? That's why Lucifer is the god of masonry. He's referred to as the god of this world. Because one or the other of these gods is always working and always wielding influence in the world. Lucifer is the light. It's how it's being used. Is it being used to bring more light to the world, or is it being used to plunge the world into darkness? So it's, it's only one god there, as far as the symbolic meaning of Lucifer is concerned. But it takes on a dual-edged meaning, depending on which work is being done with that light, with that knowledge of self. And we see the date at the, the bottom, right? Now, this is really symbolic. The date at the bottom, if we successfully are able to remove the bricks, right, a little at a time from the top, get down and eventually re- remove the base, we end up at 1776. Well, something else extremely significant occurred during 1776, not just the birth, play, the birth of the Bavarian Illuminati order, but it was also the signing of the Declaration of Independence, yep. Okay, which was a document that completely described the sovereignty of the living people of the earth and tried to enshrine those principles in a document. And it's probably the highest consciousness document that has ever been penned by a group of people, not just one individual, but a group of individuals. Right. And uh, if you really read that, it's telling you, uh, we are endowed by the Creator. An endowment is a birthright with rights that are unalienable, that can never be separated from us. They're not granted to us by man. They're not granted to us by woman. They're not granted to us by government. They are granted to us by the Creator, regardless of what you see that as. That's none of my business, what you see that force or uh, a power or energy as, and it's none of your business what I see it as. This is what, but this is why atheists are said not to uh, really be masons. They're not taking a stand one way or another. Uh, right. Atheists and ag- agnostics, you know, uh, may, one of the requirements for becoming a 
a lodge mason is you have to believe in something that's beyond the self right. because otherwise that means you're really in deep level levels of ego because you think that man is the pinnacle of creation and right. that there is nothing to evolve toward uh, other than whatever we say is the truth you know so being so being an atheist to the mason is like saying you already have the mentality of God, but you're not actually being taught, so that's why you can't be in that position. That's exactly. right. Is that correct? Okay. It, it, it's, it's looked at as the, the height of ego, saying this is the pinnacle of, 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 of evolution and we are it. You know? um, it. It leads to moral relativism. This is what, this is what social Darwinism leads to. You know, Hitler and the Third Reich and the, the, the people who really instituted the Third Reich were extreme social Darwinists. They thought that they were going to create this perfected human, you know, through exterminating anybody that didn't have the qualities that they thought it epitomized. You know, and that meant they were God. As a matter of fact, uh, Goering, Hitler, Hess, etc., Himmler, they, they were quoted oh, yeah. as saying, man is becoming God on earth. They, they yeah. actually thought that. You know? Yeah. And um, uh, th that is driven by this idea of survival of the physically fittest. Not the mentally fittest, not the highest in consciousness of, of understanding that we're all interconnected, and as we do to someone else, we do to ourselves. That isn't what they thought. The physically fittest, so based on 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 macrobiological Darwinian evolution, an idea, an ideology like that led to social Darwinism, which leads to eugenics. It all inevitably leads to that, because. That's what a controller would inevitably want to do. Control what it, what, who is able to reproduce. Not, not worry about education or educating people morally, properly. Right? Right. They would want to do it by force. And this, le this is a complete lack of understanding of how natural law works. This is why the politicians around us lack the understanding of natural law. Police, military, anybody that thinks you're going to accomplish any kind of positive change in the world through the application of physical force is delusional, completely delusional, because you, you don't understand the forces of nature. You can't, you're, you're adding the same polarity to a situation and expecting to come up with something different because control is based in fear consciousness. It's based in base consciousness at the base of the brain. Our complex behavior, fight or flight modality. Uh -huh. If you keep adding that, that's all you continue to get. So it's like saying, well, I'm going to put this fire out by continuing to add fuel and gasoline to it. Uh -huh. Sure you will. Go, go ahead and try that. Right. You don't understand how the laws of nature work if you're going to do that. I'm going to put a pile of wet clothes on the floor that I just took out of a washing machine, you know, before I let it go through the spin cycle, and I'm going to take my garden hose, and I guarantee you I'll dry these clothes by continuing to spray them with water. You're adding the same polarity to, yeah. the, to the mixture. The only way that you're going to ever change what's, what you're seeing out there is by changing what's inside, mm -hmm. by getting out of fear consciousness and getting into the consciousness of higher levels of awareness, which is love consciousness. Right. That's what everything is a choice between, love and fear. Right. So, um, you know, when you're, yeah. when you're in that base consciousness, that's a state of internal confusion. You don't really own yourself. You're owned by someone else. You're owned by the force of fear. Right. And then you go into fight or flight mode, and you want to control everything. And that, right. that's unfortunately where these dominators are at. They're, it's really fear that rules them. In, in the physical form, they're a puppet on a string of the force of fear. Right. That's who really owns the highest level controllers of this world. They think they're the owners of everything. They're not the owners of themselves because right. they're owned by fear, possession, or ownership. You know, it's interesting how those words work interchangeably and that they're possessed, but they're possessed by fear. Yes. Right. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you're basically saying, you're basically saying it's the transfer of the fear. Basically, they they fear this Lucifer, 
and they transfer the, and, and basically I guess I guess some I guess somehow they transfer that fear to the American people and that's how we fear our government. It's, it's, I don't think they fear Lucifer uh, as this symbolic idea or this symbolic god. I think they think that they're they're going to use it. Their fear is of lack of not having of having less than what they have. Lack they, of power. Lack of power, lack of things, lack of everything around them. They 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 fear the lack of the material world okay. in any way that it can be, be lacking in their idea. You know, not having food, not having money, not having power, not having influence, okay. lack of control. They they fear what they consider to be chaos. Right. You know, things not being completely wrapped up and in under tight levels of control to be the way they envision that they should be. Uh -huh. When in fact, all that you can ever create through control is chaos. Right. You can never create order. You, t you take grains of sand, and if you want them to hold a particular form or shape, you can't squeeze them because they'll run right through your hand and spill out onto the floor and they'll be in chaos. Uh -huh. Okay? If you want to shape them and you want to have them have a particular form, you've got to hold them gently right. in your hand, in the palm of your hand. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then there's some order there. Okay? Right. Or, you know, if you place them gently, you know, and, and, and uh, gently move them in a certain direction, you're creating order with that. But it's got to be done through subtle influence, and it's got to be done through respect for another individual. Okay, and it's got to be done through properly educating people about how natural law works. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, all you're creating is more fear, more negativity, more chaos in the world. And that's why we're in the situation that we're in. And because there are so few people that understand this, it doesn't look likely to be getting any better anytime soon. Yeah, I, I, totally, agree. I, I totally agree, Mark. Mark, get into the consciousness of... Um, Basically, the consciousness of the American people, and how these, how these, and how these um, elitists has has, I guess, I guess, kind of had had effect on them. That basically, how the American people are submissive. Get into that in the consciousness, and how American, and how America has become so submissive. You see what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, get yeah into that. they're actually in two forms of brain imbalance. When you understand what the left brain is responsible for making possible. Through the left brain, we engage in thinking of, of, of su such types, logic, mathematics, science. Um, uh, you have um, language, analytical thought, things like that. That's what the left brain makes possible, the left brain hemisphere. When somebody stays in that brain hemisphere... Meaning, what I mean stay in, I mean that their education is geared toward that. The way they think only encompasses that yang part of themselves. Okay? Uh -huh. What happens is you have a person that becomes incredibly resistant to changing anything other than the, the, the structures of how they live their life. The institutionalized systems that they believed in or, 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 and currently believe in. Okay? The, the, the traditions that they were brought up in. Uh, the ways that they currently think. This is called ego identification. You're identified with a role. You're identified with a type of person. You know, right. like this is where racism comes in. Okay, it's okay. A, a form of extreme left brain imbalance. Okay, okay. Uh, you have um, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> you have um, people who see themselves as separate. Okay, right. the, the divide and conquer methodology works on them very well. You can get people to believe in partisan politics that way. Right. You know, yeah. the, w believe in one of the two party systems. This is a form of left brained imbalance. Uh, nationalism. You know, um, uh, I'm 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 Irish. I'm Italian. Uh, you know, uh, identifying with uh, you know what you happen to be born as. Right. Okay, things like that. You do that through left brain imbalance. And that means that the people of the United States are very left brain imbalanced. Okay, they're very ego identified with the roles that they take on. I'm a cop. I'm a soldier. I'm a computer engineer. I'm a this, that, the other thing. Okay, okay. not not I'm just consciousness on a spiritual journey, trying to become more aware and trying to understand myself and, and how and the the realm that I'm embedded in better. 
No. Right. I'm, I'm this, that, and the other thing, and I completely step into that role and identify with it as me. Okay? Right. The opposite kind of brain imbalance is right brain imbalance. Here's what the right brain makes possible. Holistic thought, creativity, music and art, you know, seeing everything as one, a spiritual nature, you know, intuitive thought, you know, sensing something, th things like that, just pure knowing, right? right? So, this is the receptive side of the brain, the part that does want to change or does want to accept ideas, but unfortunately, in a negative way, the right brain can also become very much imbalanced. And we have this too. People are willing to believe just about any lie that they hear enough times. Yeah. Okay? The yeah. media is geared toward the right brain. Yeah. See, there are colors associated with these frequencies to the brain as well. You won't get people to stop and pay attention and just do what you want them to do. You use the color red a lot. You yeah. want people to take in something... You know, and accept this as being true, use the color blue a lot. What, it, knowing that, in light of, of the, the, the news, watch the news and see how much blue hues are used in propagating the daily news on television. Mm -hmm. And these are the two colors of the political parties as well. Yep, that's amazing too, right? Right. Yep. right. The dichotomy between colors, but the white are, is the illuminated, and that's why white is always in the middle. Yeah. Always in the middle of the other colors. Yeah, like you know, red, because white, and blue. Yeah. That's right. And the white stars are in the middle of the blue, and the white stripes are in the middle of the red ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, this isn't by accident. This is because the illuminates, right, mm -hmm. consider themselves in the position in the middle, controlling both sides like a puppet on strings, right. making them war against each other, right. divide and conquer. So. The, 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 the people of the United States are in, unfortunately, a severe imbalance in both the left and right brain hemispheres. They're in the left, uh, severely imbalanced toward the left brain hemisphere because they're resistant to change. And they think they know it all. They think they actually know something when, sadly, most of them have very ill-informed opinions. And they're very unread. Very unread. They dismiss things without any investigation. Einstein said that the height of ignorance is condemnation prior to investigation. Mm -hmm. You're dismissing something that you really know nothing about before you know anything about it. People, people will dismiss the idea of mind control. They'll dismiss the idea of occultic influence. Yeah. But when you try to explain to them, all this is is ancient psychology. Yeah. This is the ancient knowledge of how the human mind works. Yeah. And if you learn that really well, imagine how much manipulative influence you could have over another. If, if a, a really incredibly well-studied psychologist wanted to take one of his patients and really do a number on him, could he do it? He could yeah. probably manipulate him into doing mostly anything if yeah. he really wanted to turn his will toward that task. Mm -hmm. And this is what we have in the world. And see, the thing is, the right brain is so imbalanced because this is, when you go into right brain imbalance, you're willing to lay down the control. Uh, you yeah, give up right. your own sovereignty, you give up your own power when yeah. you're in extreme right brain imbalance. Right. So we have that too. People want a savior. They want a messiah to come and rescue Obama. them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what is his symbolism? The sun. Yeah. And in light of what we talked about, when you know he's totally in bed with the financial interests behind the Federal Reserve, who's really the occultist behind all of this control and yep. mind control, mm -hmm. is he the rising sun or is he the setting sun? Well, I think you know what my answer to that question is. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, when people are in this right brain imbalance, they want to look towards somebody else. Well, I close up my presentations by saying, do not look outside of yourself for the leader. There is no leader. There's no guru. There's no priest class. There's no savior coming to rescue any of us. We need to make this change in consciousness for ourselves, yeah. we for are the right leader. reasons. Yeah. That's it. Uh, we're, we're the leaders. And, and, and what, Mark said, what Mark said was key. We are the leaders, and it's up to us to make change because 
Because I, I, again, you know, and and I, and I can't I can't go psychological like Mark can, but just just speak in general. As long as long you depend on somebody, you know, as long as long you depend on somebody like an Obama or like a Bush, and, and you see the system that constantly fails and fails and fails and fails each year. As long you as long you depend on that, then you're never going to see any results. You know, that's why you have to take it on yourself. You have to have initiative, motivation. You have to inspire yourself. You have to have a drive. If you have no drive, then you, you, won't, you will never be successful, and that's just common sense. You have no drive. But, Mark, as far as your presentations. Um, Those are very inspiring words. I appreciate that. Yes, yeah, <laughs> thank you. As far as your presentations, Mark, tell, tell the audience, like, what do you do? Like, give the audience a little bit about your, your background, how you do the presentations and where you go sure, and sure. your outreach. Well, I, upon coming to a lot of this uh, knowledge, uh, I, I wasn't really doing much with it personally. Um, I was really taking in more and more and more and more and just amassing it. And I went to a lecture in uh, in the uh, the uh, northern part of the state of Virginia a, a few years back, and I met a woman there who I spoke with uh, at length after the lecture was over. And she said something to me that just had a profound impact. She said, you've amassed all of this knowledge. And she's like, from talking with you for this time, I can see you have, the, you have a huge part of the picture. You, know, you see the bigger picture, and you can really communicate it well in words. Uh-huh. She said, what are you doing with all of this knowledge? And I said, uh, not really much. I'm kind of continuously learning more and more and more. She said, that's a trap you're not really doing what you're supposed to be with it, and what makes you think you're allowed to just continue doing that, mm-hmm. right? And, and it like really hit me hard because I was like, yeah, what am I doing with all of this? I'm sitting there. I'm not talking to anybody about this because I'm kind of almost uh, in a way still concerned with what they might think or who would agree with it or who wouldn't agree with it, you know? And, and I'm like, I can't continue to just do that. I need to take this. She, she described it like this. She said, you are Niagara Falls in a uh-huh. water balloon. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. She said, there, it's total it's pressure knowledge. building up, and it's got nowhere to go. It's, 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 it's the same thing. It's like, a, it's like a butterfly in a cocoon. Instead, right. of, instead of actually opening your wings and exposing yourself to, to, to all of nature, you kind of keep yourself hidden in that little hard shell. Right. And that's what I was doing up to a couple of years ago because I still hadn't really gotten past uh, one of the last blocks of forget about what anybody else will think about this. If this is right, if this is the right thing to do to make people aware of this, then speak it into existence because the universe is spoken into existence. And what we say or do not say will have an effect on what happens because that's how we influence other people. Through our yeah. words and actions. That's correct. Now, Mark, for people that um, for for people that haven't been to your website, talk a little sure. about your website, one on earth is heaven dot com. Okay. What, what uh, can what can listeners find when they when they go to your website? Well, I'll briefly sum up how I got into doing the presentations, and then I'll talk about the site. Okay. okay. So uh, after I spoke with this woman, I kind of was inspired, and I, I for- formulated the presentation with the help of my girlfriend Barb and a friend of ours who is a teacher and has experience with o- organizing. Uh, large amounts of information. Uh, Barb's, Barb and I, uh, her, uh, our friend uh, Linda, uh, she, they helped me to formulate the entire presentation, and uh, I started uh, giving it. Uh, and it has three basic parts to it. It's got uh, the, uh, a be- uh, beginning, which is called the solution where I talk about consciousness as the solution, the emergence of consciousness as the solution to the problems that humanity is facing. I break down what consciousness is. I talk about uh, how the human brain is structured and how the physiology of the brain works. And I also uh, talk about um, uh, the polarities, the energy polarities that, that we experience, love and fear. Okay, And I talk about what they create when we use them or, or don't. Okay. Uh, and I talk about then brain imbalances, You know ha- what happens when the brain is imbalanced, which we briefly touched on. Um, in the second part, I lay out the entire problem. I lay out the manipulation, the, the global conspiracy, the, the controllers, uh, what mind control is and how it works. And then I go into an in-depth explanation of each individual methodology of mind control. So there are many of them. It's a multifaceted attack, and I break them down all one by one. 
in the later parts of that, I get into religion as astrotheology. I get into uh, subversive symbolism and break down many symbols. And then I go into the 9-11 event as an example of the modified Hegelian dialectic, okay? uh, which is uh, basically playing two sides off against each other to create the desired result. Uh, the researcher uh, David Icke has described this as problem-reaction-solution. So I break that down. And I go into an in-depth analysis of the 9-11 ritual, which was a ritual of human sacrifice, by the way. Um, after that part, then part three, I, I um, talk about solutions. How do, you, how do you take the knowledge of how, what is really going on and then apply consciousness to it to, to heal these imbalances? How do we heal the imbalances in ourself and our, in our own consciousness before we can go out and try to affect change in the world? So part three is really about how do you work on yourself? Right. You know, and then how do you help others? Because I think you've got to do both at the same time. I, I, I'm not of the opinion that it's just about working on the self and damn everybody else. We're all in this together. There's only one prison here, and we're, we're, all, you know, we're all shackled inside of it together. And we've got to help each other change and help, help each other understand what's really going on. You know, everybody's education is every other person's responsibility. You know, it really is. We are our brother's keepers, and what someone else understands, and and you know, if they want to, you know, continue to remain in ignorance, I don't think it's up to us to just say, well, you know, forget them then, screw them, let, let them let them be like that. That isn't what it's really about. It's about speaking this knowledge into existence in a way that it can it can be made easy to understand for anybody. You know, this isn't knowledge to be hoarded by an elite class of people or by secret societies. They're keeping knowledge of who we are from us. Imagine that. Think about that for a minute. That's what this is really about. Keeping knowledge of how we work and what we may be capable of. And the only reason I really do the presentation, to be honest, is I'm curious. I want to know what the human species is capable of. What is our true potential? Right. What what is it so how magnificent and incredible must it must be if these people are trying to hold back that awareness from the entire species? What might we be able to do? Yeah, I agree, Mark. So the, the on the website, I made the website in early 2008, and it's not complete by any means. It's it, it, I kind of uh, really planned an enormous website and began building it, and other matters have kind of taken over. Uh, and, I, and I kind of uh, fell away from designing it and continuing to build articles, but I am going to get back into doing that. Eventually, I plan on having the entire presentation uh, uh, textually worded out, you know, and have articles that describe every part of it. And then I'll probably be amassing that and creating a book from that uh, from that text from those articles. But uh, the only part of part one is currently finished, unfortunately. So uh, eventually there will be more info there, but you can get my flyers uh, up there. You can watch parts one through three currently. I'm uh, working on uh, digitizing part four and getting it up there. But because um, uh, I break part two down into two pieces because it's very, the, the part about the manipulation and mind control and the methodologies of how they go to work on our consciousness is quite yeah. long. So I break that into two sections. So I actually give my presentation in four pieces. And they're each about two hours. The third part can get a little lengthy if I really get deep into the into the uh, the symbolism of it. So, um, but uh, but it's generally given in four sections. They average about two hours a piece. So the whole thing is about eight hours long. And uh, on the website, uh, you could there's some there are some resources up there that you can look up uh, aspects of of uh, you know all of these things that that I touched on. And uh, you can read articles that I've posted there, uh, and uh, there will, will be new ones posted soon. And uh, again, you could also watch videos. That's in the news section. Whenever I get a new video of someone that is kind enough to record my presentation for me uh, and, and, and give me a copy of that, then I post it to the website for free. Right. I'm not going to hold you much longer, Mark. Sure. How often do you do these presentations, just, just in case of these, just in case if listeners are local and they would like to come out and actually see you do one, how often do you do them and where do you do them at? Actually, pretty frequently. Um, I've been averaging at least one a month. Um, I've been giving them at Germ Bookstore on okay. uh, Frankfurt Avenue. Okay. That's at Frankfurt and Norris. 
in Fishtown. Right. And um, now, I've, now, now, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, just for yeah. the listeners know. I, I've been giving them at uh, a place called the Radnor, uh, the, the Memorial Library of Radnor Township. That's in Wayne, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, that's been hosted by a group uh, uh, called Noetic Sciences and, and, and MUFON, uh, Mutual UFO Network. And okay. they meet there monthly. Um, and uh, the, the organizer of that is a woman by the name of Jennifer Stein. She, she's hosted my, my lectures, uh, and there's one coming up on June 10th there okay. uh, in Wayne, Pennsylvania. That will be posted to the website shortly. Uh, Germ Books, I just finished a series there, and we're having a discussion, uh, a roundtable discussion there on May 20th. Germ Books, Frankfurt, 2005 Frankfurt Avenue in Fishtown. Um, uh, I've also uh, I've done them in private homes. You know, I've, uh, anybody that wants to host this that may be local, um, I'll give this talk in anyone's home just for donations. I don't ask anything for for the talk. You could have it in sections, or I could do a marathon event if you have people that have that kind of endurance. Uh, but uh, you know, kind of generally, I've agreed with other people that it's difficult to take in all at once. So I broke it into sections. Um, uh, so uh, anybody that wants to host it can also host it. I've also given them at a scene food market uh, just off of South Street in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, that's on 4th and Monroe, uh, which is just south of South Street. Uh, and uh, they, they were very uh, very uh, uh, kind hosts. They hosted a four-part series there in their lecture room. So I'm, I'm always looking for new venues to give it. Uh, if anybody knows of any, get in touch with me through the site. Uh, and if you want to host it yourself, get in touch with me through the site. Awesome. And and to all my listeners, support people like Mark. Mark has a kind heart. A lot of times when he does these, um, especially if it's like a germ bookstore or a library, a lot, a lot like I said, he don't charge he don't charge nothing for it. But people like this need support. And I, and, and I ask all my listeners, we, we we're all in this together. You know, if you can or if you're local, you know, support Mark. Because you know he has a kind of heart, and you know he's wasting and he's using his precious time to actually educate you. So the least we could do, you know, as the audience or whoever is intending to listen to Mark, is to be nice and give back. You know, whether I mean, I mean, I know I know the economy is horrible, and I know people are not financially able to to do well. But whether it's maybe five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you could do, show some support. You know, or maybe any any other way you could help Mark. You know, show some support because there's people like there's people like him and it's people like me that wants to educate you. And basically, when you support us, that's what keeps us going, and and and, and that's what we need. We need your support. You know, a really lot of people, a lot of people want. Uh, let me say this, Mark. Yeah. A lot of people want to take in knowledge, but they don't want to, they don't want to contribute or put nothing back up. A lot of people want to. Um, a lot of people want to reap, but they don't want to sow. Okay. Right. So in order for us, in, in order for us to keep going, in order for us to expand. In order, in order for our motors to keep churning, you have to support us, okay? I mean, whether you support me, whether you support Mark, whether you say, you know what, I don't like Garnet, I'm going to go support Mark, whatever. As long as, you, as long as you support, as long as you support the message, that's what furthers the message, and that's what, and that's what enlarges the movement. Go ahead, Mark. I really appreciate you saying that, but I'd like to add something to it. I think that the best way that anybody can support what uh, someone like you or I are doing isn't even to contribute to directly to me. Mm-hmm. I think the best way anybody can contribute to this effort is to learn this information to such a level that you can then communicate it to other people effectively. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is the way I'd like to see people help out more than any other way because then they're, they become one of the pinpoints of light poking through the darkness and trying to bring the light down to this, this, this darkened world. Right. So that's, that's how I would ask more than any other way for people to help. You, you want to really get involved and help out? Learn the truth about what is taking place here to a high level and then speak that to others. That's the best way. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Mark. Mark's website is what 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 on earth is happening dot com. What on earth is happening dot com. Check out his website. Um, support him. Really appreciate you having me on. That was great. YouTube dot com slash open up your mind one oh one.